السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين Honorable President, Your Excellency, Dr. Hussein bin Ali Hassan Mouini, and my colleagues who are here, I actually have met the Mufti of Zanzibar and the Chief Qadi, whom I happen to be in Medina Munawwara, studying at the same time with him and a few of the others whom I was so happy to meet after a long time, I want to say something today to this lovely crowd who is here. Firstly, looking at this stadium, I thought I was in Europe. Subhanallah. And I'm thinking to myself, imagine state of the art. In Zanzibar, I was here 10 years ago or more than 10 years ago. And I want to congratulate not only His Excellency, the President, but all of you who are from Zanzibar, MashaAllah, Tabarakallah, Alhamdulillah, the place has developed so much and I am a witness as a foreigner. MashaAllah, Takbir! I want to tell you, development can never happen if you do not have peace. It is impossible to develop without peace. No country that has no peace has been able to develop. So when I see progress like that, which I have noticed here in Zanzibar, one thing I can tell you is you are peace-loving people. Maintain it, hold fast onto it. And today I want to talk about how some of the people might come to you in order to make you dispute to a degree where you lose your peace. Be careful of them and watch out. Make sure that you understand as a believer, we say we have Iman. Mu'min means a person who has belief. Did you know that Aman or Amn is also a similar root as the belief and faith, and yet it refers to peace and security. I noticed when I was here many years ago upon the invitation of a group of students by the head who was Brother Ghaid Saeed, some of you may know him, may not know him, humble people. I came here, I stayed at the residence there at that university, and I moved around noticing a lot of the beauty of this lovely place. And now years later, when I have come, and I see so much of development I thank Allah and I pray to Allah that in the same way we have managed to develop and shall continue to develop our nation and our beautiful country. We should also develop our hearts, our spirituality and our connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you are young, you question your faith sometimes. It happens. It happens that you question your faith sometimes. You call out to Allah. You ask Allah so many things one after the other. And sometimes you think he's not giving you what you want. Don't despair. We were there. It happens to us as adults as well that when we call out to Allah, we are begging we are asking, we want so many things and we think to ourselves, why is it that he is not giving us certain things? I can tell you, sometimes as a result of your supplication for A, you achieve B, C, D, E, F until the end of the alphabet, yet you are asking for A, the barakah of and the blessings of seeking from Allah what you want. Allah gives you a lot of what you do not realize you need even more desperately. So continue to ask Allah. You will never ever suffer a loss by asking Allah and supplicating and having hope. I want to give you one example. If there is a person who is terminally ill, may Allah grant cure to all those who have sickness. Amen. 
If there is a person who is terminally ill and they are about to die, the doctors say that you are going to not, you are going to perhaps die soon, you won't survive. And they make dua. They ask Allah. They are supplicating, Oh Allah, cure me. I know you will do it. I know you can do it. I know you shall do it. You are the owner of cure. For you, it is so easy. You will do it. Do you know, if your death is written and you die, you may enter paradise as a result of the hope that you had when you were calling Allah for cure and Allah knew that he's actually going to take you away. So that hope alone is an act of worship. Have hope and understand that Allah Almighty will always give you something in return for of your supplication. Your dua will never go to waste. Now, let's move a little bit further. As believers, we sometimes have a few doubts now and again from shaitan. The devil comes and makes us think things. I give you an example. When we dress in a specific way, sometimes people will tell us, why are you dressing like this? You need to be modern. You need to actually take off this dress. You need to remove it. So for them to say, take it off, they are considered modern and they are allowed to do that. But for someone like me to stand up and tell you, keep it on, they will say, this guy is an extremist. This guy is a terrorist. This guy is uh, whatever else. They use bad words. But all we are saying is your morality should not go down. Your values should not go down. Maintain your faith. People have already dipped into a lot of distance from Allah. People have dipped into the devil's pot and come out of it and they are telling you, Wallahi, we have seen the darkness and we will never go back there. That's why many reverts who come to Islam, when they become Muslim, they are sometimes stronger than those who were born Muslims because they saw the darkness. They were dipped into the pot of the devil and they came out of it. They will never ever go back. But you and I, when we were born Muslim, when we come from an Islam, Islamic environment, sometimes we don't appreciate the favor of Allah on us. I am here to tell you, maintain your values, your morals. Zanzibar is a beautiful place, predominantly Muslim, if not almost all Muslim. And I tell you, greet people with a smile. Welcome them to your place, whether they are Muslim or non-Muslim. We welcome them in a way that when they see how we live our lives, they will search for the reason why we are so good, so kind, so welcoming and they will then turn towards the deen of Allah just by virtue of your beautiful interactions. When Allah brings tourists to you because he has given you beauty of the island and beauty of so much coast that you have and beauty of so many other things, he brings people to you. It is your duty not to forget Allah. It is your duty rather to carry yourself with such dignity, so much of beauty. You know, as soon as they come, they automatically realize what we have is actually not as good as what they have in terms of contentment. We are happy. We are a nation who is at peace and we will continue to be at peace by the favor of Allah. What is my sign that you are at peace? I see development. Like I said earlier, it is not easy. That's one sign, but it's the main sign. Peace, you see a lot of development. People can grow when everything is peaceful. But if you look carefully, people may somehow, especially nowadays we have access to the internet. And online you will find people calling you towards so many things. Like I said earlier, when I tell you to keep your dress the way it is or to cover yourself, people will say, why is he saying that? But when people tell you to uncover, to undress, to remove your clothing, they will say, wow, look at how modern they are. Wow, look at how amazing this nation is finally liberated. Liberated from what? Liberated from your connection with Allah. I don't want that. Liberated from what? 
from the angels protecting you. No, we don't want that. We want contentment. We want happiness. We want internal bliss. We want a connection with Allah. I said earlier, there are those who have already been in the darkness. Wallahi, when they come out, they see the light and they realize this is the path. I cannot let go of this path. Allah Almighty tells us, hold fast to the rope of Allah and don't let go. Don't let go no matter what. A day will come when you will return to Allah. You will be a happy person. I don't care what they say about me. I am going to develop my relationship with Allah. Earlier, my colleagues spoke. And each one of them reminded us of Salah, the prayer. I wanted to really talk about prayer today, Salah, in a, in a very detailed way. But I noticed, mashallah, they covered the topic so well. Each one is reminding you of prayer, prayer, prayer. Why? Why are they reminding you of prayer? I promise you it is because success comes when you connect with the owner of success. And who is the owner of success? Is it not Allah? When you want success, connect with Allah, He will give you the success. You want wealth? Wealth, connect with Allah, He will give you wealth that comes with goodness. I don't want wealth that comes with evil. I don't want wealth that comes with destruction. I want wealth that comes with goodness and the blessings of Allah. So connect with Allah and see what happens. That's why we heard it. I promise you, if I have one message for you today, it is take your prayer seriously. Take your prayer seriously, no matter who you are. Take your prayer seriously. If Allah says this is success, I promise you that is indeed success. When you grow older, and I'm addressing the younger ones who are seated here. As you grow older, you will realize the importance of this five daily prayer. Wallahi, there is nothing that can overtake it in terms of the success you'll achieve by fulfilling it correctly. May Allah grant us goodness. So people will tell you from all over that you are the one who is right. You are the one who is the only one who is right. Anyone who says anything contrary to what you are saying is wrong. And if they are wrong, you need to fight them. That's what people may teach you. We teach you that yes, when you follow your faith, you are right. You may want to believe that others are wrong, correct? Yes. But you do not fight and cause disunity and you do not disturb your peace. You might think, what do you mean you do not cause disunity when we don't agree? If I don't agree with you, say for example, I have someone who belongs to a different sect of Muslim or a different faith altogether. Do I agree with them? No. Am I united? To a degree, yes. What's the difference? I want to explain to you today. Unity is not uniformity. Rather, unity is the ability to respect someone with the difference you have with them. For a common purpose, you want to build your nation. The nation is made up of so many different people, each belonging to different faiths, maybe different sects, maybe. You might even have some people who don't even have a faith at all. It does not mean I agree with them to be able to get along with them or to be able to respect the fact that they are human beings. They are human beings. And the reason I tell you this is the world is changing. So many people will come about with so much difference. So many people will come about with so many weird things. Are you allowed to disagree with them? Yes, you are allowed to disagree. You must disagree if you believe they are wrong. But what should you do? Do you respect them as a human? Yes, I respect you, but I disagree with you. What does that do? That will ensure peace. It will ensure stability and it will ensure growth. Without that, you are not going to grow. If you want to fist each other just because you disagree with each other, you won't grow. You don't fist each other. You don't become violent. You don't become physical. And you don't even become abusive in the way you talk. I don't need to call you a dog just because I disagree with you. In fact, some people love dogs. Don't you agree? Some people love dogs. Yeah. 
So they say, well, I don't mind if I really was called a dog because you know what? Dogs are cute. Trust me, it depends how you use the word. When you call each other names that are abusive, in a tone that is abusive, with the intention of abuse, you are wrong. No matter how wrong the person you were addressing might have been in terms of your disagreement. But you can't do that. When I disagree with someone, I need to at least let them know respectfully that I disagree with them. I disagree with you, my brother, and I disagree very, very strongly. But guess what? You're a human. Well, let's talk about it. By me talking and addressing the matter, I may be able to convince that person that they are wrong. Or they might convince me that I was wrong if in the case I was wrong and they managed to talk, me, to, talk to me and to put forward whatever evidences they were. But without that discussion, we're going nowhere. So I am here to tell you, make sure that you connect with Allah and you understand how to treat each other. How to treat each other. Today, let's be honest, what are we facing in the Muslim Ummah? We have different sects, different people. This one is, belongs to this sect. Another one belongs to another sect. The other one belongs to a third sect. We will never be able to bring everyone together on one platform in one sect and say right you all need to believe exactly this and it's going to happen it's not going to happen it's not going to happen so what do i do i respect you but i disagree with you on two or three things i'm not going to say you are not a muslim you are this nowadays they use the term you are a kafir you are this for what why are they saying the shahada yes they are well at least call them muslim that is the entry point call them muslim and you know what? You can say, you are a Muslim, I disagree with five things that you are saying or doing. But the other 5,000 things, we are all one. We are one. The, the, the weakness of the Ummah today is because we are being fragmented by this ideology where each one believes he's the only Muslim. I'm the only Muslim, that's it. We are fragmented. And if that fragmentation is going to happen, how are we going to ensure growth? Not just as a nation, but broader ummah. There won't be growth. If you look at what's going on across the globe against the ummah, you will realize it is primarily because we are fragmented. That's what it is. I believe, and I've traveled to so many countries, that where we are fragmented, there is an external enemy that is rejoicing and saying, wow, these people are in small groups. Don't allow that to happen. Don't allow that to happen. Learn to respect each other learn to come together so let me talk of prayer from another angle altogether look the call to prayer is called how many times a day five times who decided that you did not allah decided it and you have to adjust your life to what the supreme maker has said in the same way, when you have rules and regulations, whether it's at your school, in your country, at your workplace, wherever it may be, someone above you has decided those rules, you will have to follow. You will have to follow the rules. When they say, this is the protocol, this is the rule, you need to get here at this time. School, they say, come at 8 o'clock. Can you just decide, I'm going to arrive at 9? They will punish you. They will penalize you. Maybe if you have a note to explain why you were late once or twice, they might excuse you. But if it is more than that, you will be penalized. So when Allah has disciplined you five times a day to fulfilling the connection with Him at specific times, one of the fringe benefits is that you become a disciplined person even with your timing. May Allah Almighty make us from among those. Then you stand in a row. The Imam says, Stawu, stawu. Doesn't he say that? Sawu sufufakum fa inna taswiyat sufufi min iqamati salah. Straighten the rows. Stand shoulder to shoulder. Stand all in one line. For indeed, straightening the row is part of the completion of your salah. Now, when you are standing, you are standing next to someone. 
you don't even know who he is or you know who he is and you do not get along with him in the world because he has a business similar to yours and you know what you are now in competition with him in business but in that prayer your prayer is not complete if you're going to leave a gap there you need to stand next to him why no matter what you are part of the ummah you will have to stand next to the guy next to you he is tall he is short you like him you don't like him he is a muslim you will have to stand in the same sub for that salah to be accepted that is allah training you to adjust yourself to fulfill his instruction whether it suits you or does not suit you for the betterment of the entire ummah above the benefit of yourself i need to stand in a row i'm one i'm one of so many i'm not alone i can't achieve a thing alone i can only achieve when there is a good team around me if there is no good team i will never achieve no matter who you are so this is why you stand in the saf when the imam goes down you go down why you follow your leader you can't just break your rules all on your own this is part of the broader benefit of salah it teaches you an element of respect you know the theme of this light upon light in zanzibar is peace respect and unity peace respect and unity all these three are interconnected you want peace you will have to respect each other with a difference and that's one thing i want to talk about always that people think ah we are not united we are wallahi we are united it doesn't mean because you are different from me in my thinking that i'm not united with you i'm united but i disagree with one or two things if we were disunited because of disagreement in our own houses none of us think the same husband and wife who love each other so much they also have disagreements they are united more than you can imagine they've had so many children they are united but they have disagreement so unity is not uniformity you don't need to be exactly the same to consider yourself unity you know when you wear a school uniform the whole unit the whole school is wearing the same color look there they are mashallah everyone's wearing the same color that does not mean that they are united but rather they are they have uniformity look at that mashallah tabarakallah they are happy that i noticed them mashallah i noticed you when i walked in and more than the fact that i noticed the dress i pray for you because you came here i think at 6 in the morning may allah almighty bless you all and 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 there too i know you came in very early may allah almighty bless you all when we go for hajj we are all wearing similar clothing that does not make us united no it doesn't that's a rule of allah that we are following allah wants us to follow it yes there are broader benefits of it but unity would be when the hearts understand we need to respect each other i've been to many countries with one example and i want to say it again because the reminding benefits the believers you know the hadith of the prophet muhammad peace be upon him where he says there was a man who achieved forgiveness and ultimate paradise as a result of quenching the thirst of a dog because he was out on a hot day he went into a well and he got water for himself he was very thirsty when he came up he saw a dog that was panting and sniffing at the sand because it was so thirsty and he said to himself look at this dog it is as thirsty as i was let me go into the well again fill my shoe with water because i don't have anything to put water in let me come up and let me give the dog a little bit of water and he gave the dog some water and Allah watched him and Allah forgave him. That man achieved ultimate paradise. If you think very carefully, why a dog? Why a dog? Why wasn't it a beautiful girl? Wow, the man came up and saw a lovely lady. And he said, let me go and quickly get you water. Because if it was a lady, there was going to be a wrong intention maybe, right? You know, maybe he saw, it's like they say, when you're, when you're driving, I don't know about Zanzibar, but I know about Zimbabwe, right? When you're driving, if a man gets stuck with a flat tire, he will be stopping the people all afternoon, no one will stop. 
But when a young lady is stuck with a flat tire, 30 guys will fight as to who must fix that tire. Right? Why? Let's hope it's a good intention. But in actual fact, you and I know it's because they want to win the heart of someone whom they don't even need to win the heart of. Subhanallah. Go home and win the heart of your own spouse, man. Allahu Akbar. May Allah make it easy. Allah make it easy. But it happens. So here there was a dog. A dog. Imagine if such a great reward for quenching the thirst of a dog. What do you think the reward is to quench the thirst of another human? Human. You don't agree with them. You don't see eye to eye with them. You don't even want to look at them. But because you have compassion in your heart, you decided, you know what? They deserve the water they need to live. Life is important. Life is sacred. I'm a Muslim. I believe the life of the non-Muslims is also sacred. All human beings, the life is sacred. You don't just harm and take life away. No, that's not permissible in the Sharia, in Islam. Allah does not allow that. Allah tells you when you save the life of a dog or you quench the thirst of a dog, you will get a reward. Imagine what will be the reward when you quench the thirst of another human. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. Are we ready to help each other without knowing each other? Are we ready to reach out to people whom we don't know? Are we ready to reach out to those whom we disagree with? At least talk to them. At least get along with them. It will help you in so many ways. At least if you want to discuss some matters, discuss them respectfully. If you are prepared to do that, you will achieve a lot. If you are not prepared to do that, how will you grow? How will you develop? Who, who caused that person to come alive? Was it not the same maker who made you? Yes, it was. Who brought you on earth at the, at the same time as that person? Was it not Allah? Today I am here. I am living in this era. You are also living in the same era. Who made me live at a similar time as you? Was it not Allah? It's Allah. So I am here, mashallah. The interaction needs to be something worth remembering. When someone meets you, make it a beautiful experience. When someone greets you, smile at them. Give them a good word. Say something. Let them remember that forever. They will remember where I met brother Suhail. He was such a lovely brother. And I will never forget that interaction. How do I know this? I know it because this is how he made me feel. Sometimes we make people feel so unwanted. But that was Allah. Allah made you interact with them and you failed the test. You failed the interaction. You failed it. Why should I fail? I must pass it. My brothers and sisters, let's fulfill our duty unto Allah. Better your relationship with Him. Two things. I spoke about prayer and I spoke about your values. Don't lose the connection with Allah. Take your prayer seriously, always. And number two, ensure you don't lose your values. Your standards are very high. Go higher, but don't go lower. Don't let anyone fool you into believing you need to lose yourself in order to modernize. You need to lose yourself in order to be liberated. No, we will modernize with the connection with Allah. Allah did not say don't have the latest technology. Allah did not say don't have the best roads. Allah did not say don't have the best houses, best vehicles. Allah did not say don't develop. He wants you to develop. He wants you to be the most modern. He wants you to have the best facility. But with the connection with Him. That's all He's saying. You must educate yourself. But connect with Allah. And maintain that connection in the best way. See what Allah does for you. So may Allah Almighty protect the nation. Guard this nation. Wallahi. If you want... To witness greater growth, don't ever allow anything that happens in your life to make you become physical or violent or disrespectful. Because if that is the case, you will move backwards. You know, you might be surprised. As a religious person, standing in front of you talking about the importance of respecting with difference. 
The reason is we witness destruction in so many places. When we see goodness, it's our duty to remind you, this is a favor of Allah upon you. Consider it a favor and protect it in whatever way you can. Protect it. Look at people, care for them. These are my brothers. These are my sisters. Let me help. Let me protect. So what if they are not so kind to me? Let me continue to be kind to them. That's a believer. If they are not so kind to me, let me continue to be kind to them because I am kind because Allah loves those who are kind. Islam did not say be kind to those who are kind to you. No. Islam says be kind to everyone. Who says that? Allah. When you are kind to someone, you are kind in order to please Allah, not to please you as a human being. No. If you are happy, alhamdulillah, it's a bonus. But if you are not happy, it's okay. Allah is already happy. When you give to a poor person, you don't give to make the poor person happy. You are, making to make, you are giving to make Allah happy. That's the intention. But the poor person will become happy as a result. As a result. Your primary intention is to please Allah. So here we are, a beautiful, beautiful stadium, like I say. And do you know what? The last time I came, what did I tell you? I stayed at the campus of Zanzibar University. Some of you might be familiar with exactly where I was. And this time I came, again, I felt I was in the Maldives for a moment. Where was I? I, I thought, I told these people I, from the air, I'm looking, I see, wow, look at the blue water. Sheikh, it looks like we are flying over the Maldives. He said, what? I said, just look, 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 subhanallah. And we came in, they escorted us to a beautiful resort, Verdi, whoa, Verdi. I'm looking at this place, I'm telling myself, is this really Zanzibar? I need to let the world know, please come to Zanzibar. Zanzibar, Akuna Matata. Have you seen that one there? Please come to Zanzibar. I saw those brothers making a video where they had the, the picture and they were, they were saying, welcome to Zanzibar and they jumped into the water. I want to jump into the same water, inshallah. Inshallah, it's so beautiful. I want the world to know Zanzibar is a beautiful destination, halal friendly, amazing place. It has developed over the last 10 years and it will continue to develop inshallah azza wa jal. When you are planning your holidays, wherever you are across the globe, consider Zanzibar. Because wallahi, you won't regret. Not only will you see beautiful beaches and lovely weather, you will witness the beautiful hearts of the lovely people of this nation. And you will also be treated with an amazing market where you can buy some of the best spices on earth do you agree mashallah mashallah beautiful some of the best spices on earth so the spice market when i recall the last time just driving past and there was a beautiful smell and i'm thinking to myself just look look at this place i wish i could just become invisible in order to be able to walk through the way i want it mashallah but well done Wallahi, I'm here to congratulate you as a nation. The leadership and all the way down to the last person, you have done well. Preserve it. We are here to let the rest of the world know as well. This place is underrated. We need to let the world know it exists. And you know what? We need to let the world know when you are planning your next break and holiday, consider... Consider... Zanzibar, mashallah, jazakumullah khair. May Allah protect you all. Aqulu qawli hadha wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabina Muhammad wa sallamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.